Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, this is Ken um, from Marvelous Orchid and I am here at our Ramberg branch. I uh, thought I would give us a walkthrough and see what we have at our branch. Um, follow me. Flowering acmeas and also your bromeliads. So in our Rambuk branch, we have some of these amazing setups of bromeliads that are mounted on wood. And often you'll find some of these fixtures that are here for over four to five years. And the present representation of bromeliads in this manner is just stunning. So out here, we also have other sort of orchids that are available. Um, both your Spanish moss as well as your Oncidium, your Cymbidiums and so on. So if we take a walk through here, got your old man, your poor man's orchid, I mean, your Epidendrum. And the colour of the leaf are not typically red. The reason why they are this colour is because they are exposed to the extreme cold out here. So although they are out in the cold and the leaves have turned the shade of purple, red, um, maroon colour, it will acclimatise in time and with these ones over here they have acclimatised over a period of four to five years. So that being the case, they are able to survive out here. If we look on the top, um, where there's just one set of nets that is about 60%, with that they don't get frost over the plant itself. Uh, otherwise it does get pretty cold here at the branch, sometimes as low as minus two. And as we walk through, you've got a lot of your Guzmania, which is part of your Bromelia family and then your acmeas at the back and then more mounting of bromeliads on wood as well as staghorns on the top. So if you do come through, I um, hope you enjoy walking through and finding little corners uh, and surprises that you have as you walk through the nursery. And I want you to also look carefully, sometimes you would have bromeliads that are flowering so with these bromeliads they typically flower roughly about every two to three years time and when they have experienced a harsh condition like what we are experiencing right now going into winter um, they are they do tend to flower and the thing is with these bromeliads once they are done flowering this main bulb is not going to flower anymore so once the flowers are done you'll find that little pups is going to grow out from the bottom of the bromeliads and then as they multiply they're going to look something similar to this and only the new pup are going to flower in the future. So bromeliads are a great candidate for mounting on wood. And we've done a workshop recently in our Ramburg branch showing people how we can mount orchids, bromeliads, talantias, and even staghorns onto wood. So over here, we just want to give you a better idea as to the possibilities of such plants in the nursery. So we walk through towards the front, we've got more fruit trees as well as other hanging baskets that are lovely for the home. So this is almost like a transition between your indoor and outdoor. One of those things um, that contributes to the success of all these plants in the nursery are these irrigation systems. So when I first started the branch, um, I knew very little about the plants actually. So um, whether um, be it the fruit trees, whether be it the roses, um, even the seedlings, a lot of them I wasn't getting a lot of success. And one of the reasons for that was inconsistency in terms of watering. 
So yeah, here you are, all one of your favorite salvia hot lips. Lovely perennials. So you cut these back and the bee love these plants. Typically have them in, or every garden should have one of these salvia hot lips. And they're quite hardy. And when they grow into a bush, um, you'll often see tons of bees coming into the garden. And as I was saying, in terms of watering, consistency is key. So once I got these irrigation system in there, so on the same line down here, you'll find different irrigations throughout the nursery. And I have them on a system where they would go on once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and they kind of just maintain a good watering pattern throughout the nursery. And once I got the irrigation sorted, or the watering, the consistency of the watering down to a T, the plant tends to thrive, regardless of where or what kind of plants I have in the nursery. So that, that's one of the main things that you want to look at uh, when you start off um, with adding plants into your homes, into your gardens, to make sure that the place that you are placing them in is ideal for that area making sure that you water them on a regular basis and making it a habit like a lifestyle in order to have great success with the plants so here we are in our talansia corner so as you can see talansias can be mounted on wood and often is mounted on wood got your spanish moss on the side and often complements orchids. So some of these Talansias, we get them from Guatemala. So in that kind of environment, they would be almost like a forest situation where you have uh, intermittent light. So you've got your trees on the top canopies and then filtered sunlight coming down to the um, bottom of the forest and then also high humidity. So with that humidity, the Talansia has grown to actually absorb that nutrients right out from the air. And the key with the Talansia is you want to have them well watered, but not to have them always sitting in water. If they are always damp, they would tend to rot quicker and you don't want that. So here we are. We've also got these epiphyllum. Uh, epidendrum, sorry, epidendrum or poor man's orchid. Almost like a bamboo like plant. And epidendrum is a lovely orchid to have in your gardens as they will survive outdoors. As long as you have a good canopy on top, they are able to survive and they will thrive and you'll see they will continue to flower as long as you keep feeding the orchid. So for a epidendrum like this size, it has been flowering since February. So we are now towards the end of June. So that gives you a good three to four months of continuous flowering. And they come in all sorts of lovely colors. Your yellow, your orange, your white, your red lovely plants to also mount as sometimes they have many different pups growing out of their stems and what you can do is you can grab them and mount them on top of these wood and here we are looking at the wood the choice of wood is the guideline there is making sure that the wood is hard enough that it won't rot in a very short period of time. If you do have them in a wood that would rot quickly, it will tend to have to replace that wood every year to every second year. But if you have something like these kind of wood, these are mapani wood or driftwood, wash up on the beach lines and then they have kind of gone through all those environments, um, all those harsh environments, and then creating this lovely tapestry of patterns. 
and they are a great candidate for mounting as because the hardness of the wood is going to allow these plants to stay on top of here without breaking down for seven to eight years. Right, I'll take you through to the indoor plant area. In this area, most of the plants are ideal for the homes. And what that means is it's not exposed to the elements of the outdoors. So if we take a look up top, It not only has the 60% netting over it, but also a clear cover that allows this area to be a little bit warmer in comparison to the outdoor area. And with these plants, you want to make sure that they are protected from the elements and um, the ma majority of it being the sun. So our sun up here in Hauteng is quite high in terms of UV exposure. So if you have these indoor plants, you'll tend to find that the sun will burn the, the cells of the plant itself. So the leaf would go brown and they won't be as happy as if you were to have them indoors. And now, although we say they are indoor plants, all plants need sufficient lighting. So no plant can survive in no light. So a very few selection of plants that will be able to survive in very, very low light conditions. For example, like these ferns. Low light conditions are ideal for these ferns as they are typically found in forest. Nevertheless, a good amount of light is necessary for all plants to thrive. So as I step inside the orchid room, I also want to just show you the environment that we have here at our Ramburg branch. So not only do we have the um, netting on the top, the upper cover, in this room we now also have a flat um, plastic that we have on top of it here in order to close off the amount of area that we need to heat. Taking a closer look at our cymbidiums this season, a lot of them are still in buds. Cymbidiums typically become available from anywhere from the beginning of April all the way up to October. So as time goes by, these bud is going to open and it just started to rain here at the Rambo branch towards the end of July. Having rain right now is a little bit odd but as the temperature drops, it's gonna take much longer for your cymbidium to bloom. And in, in that, they're going to last a little bit longer as well. So they are a lovely winter orchid to keep. And they will typically flower every season if you continuously feed your orchid. To layers at this branch as well as dendrobriums. Prevention often is much better than cure because by the time you actually find your pest inside the garden or inside the home and they've already been there for quite some time, they have done its damage to the plant itself. And by applying the insecticides, you are, ex you are actually inducing a lot of stress onto the plant itself, be it the orchid, the outdoor plants, the trees. So making sure that prevention ahead of the season as soon as there's a seasonal change, there'll be a boom in terms of your insects and your fungus and your bacteria. So making sure that whenever there's a seasonal change, you want to apply those things ahead of time. And if you have any other questions with regards to orchids or anything that you would like me to do videos on, be sure to leave your comments down below. I hope everybody stay warm. So that's a look at our greenhouse here in Ramburg, our greenhouse garden nursery here in Ramburg. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like the video, um, please hit the like and subscribe button and so that I can show you more of those videos in the future.